Hello, everybody. Today we're going to ask the very basic question, and probably the first one we should ask, period, when we're thinking about making a video game, and that is, what is a game? And to help demonstrate this point, I am going to show you to this, a fidget spinner. For those of you from the future who no longer use fidget spinners or know what they are, basically, they spin. And you can do tricks with them and things of that nature. Don't ask me to do tricks with them because I can barely keep it on one finger. Uh, but, as you can see, a lot of people have used them in the past, played with them, and uh, done a lot of, let's say, interesting things. And they seem like they are actually possibly a, uh, a game within themselves. But well, what is a game? Well, let's take a, a look, and, and just for a brief mental exercise, what do you think actually makes up a game? What If you were to define a game, take just this few brief seconds here to think what makes it. Why is it a game versus something else? Okay, now when you're done, here's a couple things that might, might make things a little more clear. And that's basically what are the characteristics of a game. So let's take a look real quick. So here's what I would call um, four basic pieces. And uh, if, if you've ever read the book by Adams and Rawlings, this really lays it out clear. In fact, a lot of these slides I use, I've taken a lot of, of stuff from them as well as the um, other books like Scott Rogers' book. So let's take a look at characteristics. Rules. And when we say rules, what I would say, not necessarily the obvious, like a crossword puzzle, uh, is it a game? Maybe, um, but you know, you're supposed to write words down and across. I wouldn't call puzzles necessarily games, uh, because even though they have basic rules, they don't have these kind of layered rules, and that's why we, why the, that single bullet is there. The meta rules are essentially rules about rules, which is, and they usually have a hierarchy, so some take advance. So if you look at something like Monopoly, really what it has is a series of steps where you have to roll dice, move to certain spots, you can buy them, you can put houses and hotels on them, but if somebody else owns them, you have to pay them, and you can't buy them and put the hotels in them and uh, homes on them. So there's rules that supersede other rules. So in other words, the I can't buy it because somebody else owns it is 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 the hierarchy of rules. The, somebody else owning it means I can't buy it. It's not just, oh, we're dice rolling and we're going around in a circle. There's also obviously going to prison, uh, going straight to go, community chest, all those other kind of pieces that are kind of sub rules. We're gonna say that puzzles are like games, but they aren't games because of not having these kind of layered and interacting rules. At some point, you have to get somewhere and achieve something. So like to go back to Monopoly, you have to win, right? You have to essentially make everyone else bankrupt. That's the goal. That's what separates this from a toy. So toys don't have goals. You're just supposed to have fun with them. You're supposed to use them. They're supposed to entertain you, all that good stuff but they don't necessarily um, have a specific goal in mind. I'd also say this is what separates games from, say, something like gambling. Where gambling, yeah, your goal is to win as much as possible, but what is that amount? When do you know when you achieve that goal? I mean, is it, okay, I've made $500 and now I'm going to stop? I don't think any, the average gambler has that goal. They just play till they're comfortable with how much they've one or they've lost everything so i guess like, i don't think that's their goal is to lose everything so that i would say that would keep um that from being a, a game although you could play certain gambling things as games um yeah the one thing i will say this about um goals is they don't have to be achievable if you think about the old time arcade games like pac-man the goal is to clear the board, right? But after you clear the board, you have to clear another one and then another one. So there's kind of this fictitious, well, at some point I'm going to win. But um, it's, it's so far in the future. Same with Space Invaders, all those. So th there, is a, there is a specific goal in mind, but it doesn't necessarily always have to be 
um, the end, you know, it could be a clearing of a board or it could be something so in the future that you could possibly never achieve it. And then that would be um, a, a kind of like an unattainable goal, but something that people are playing towards. Uh, the last two are pretty obvious. So play, obviously, you want to enjoy it. But again, that's not going to there's not a lot that can separate it. And then this this pretend reality or the magic circle will eventually talk about in that you think that these rules matter. So if you go back to that first bullet, you have rules and they mean a lot. So think about in terms of, say, something like football. You pass the ball, somebody crosses the goal line, you say seven points. Well, really all they've done is thrown a ball, caught it, and ran, right, and then stopped at a certain point. Imaginary line that the end zone is, that is what defines that kind of pretend reality. For, for that moment when they do it, you believe that you should be following those rules and there is this kind of world where seven six or seven points <laughs> exists now that we've talked about the characteristics of it let's talk about what aren't characteristics of it so first of all competition this feels like it um because most of the games we do have competition like board games and stuff your goal is to, to win right and to win against somebody else but you can also have collaborative games as we've seen with something like, um, you know, uh, The Sims or something, they that is you can do this kind of collaboration. There's also the co-op modes like Battlefield or something like that, where um, multiple people play for to achieve something else. It doesn't you don't directly have to compete with someone else. I guess in, in a way you kind of do have to compete with the computer, but the computer might not be fighting against you. You know, it, it might just, it might be just a simulation that you're trying to get um, to your goal and your goal isn't necessarily competing against the computer or not. It's, it's trying to figure out how to get to that, to the ending. Uh, conflict, uh, this is also something. So uh, most video games, we, we tend to think of, you know, shooting or, or attacking with an axe or a sword or something like that. But in reality, um, most games are for ages 13 and below. Um, believe it or not, a lot of puzzle games and things of that nature where they don't have conflict, uh, the goal is to just, again, solve something. Entertainment. Uh, Games for Health is a good example of this, where usually their goal is to educate as opposed to entertain. The, the games might be fun, as you can see with the next bullet, but they, um, they aren't meant to uh, just pass time or give you a stress release or something like that. Fun, obviously, everybody knows this and fun because we've all played a game that has not been fun and uh, regretted it, usually. Uh, lastly, story, even though there usually are narratives and story, and we'll talk a little bit more about writing and story later. Obviously, when you have something as simple as like a bejeweled or a peggle or something like that, there may be no story um, associated with them. They could just merely be, okay, I'm going to complete this. I'm going to go on the next one. I'm going to complete that. Okay, so now, now that you have your... Uh, characteristics and non-characteristics, let's rethink about this. If I'm talking about the fidget spinner here, is it a game or is it not?